Text Expander from Smile is supporting this edition of Mac Voices. Text Expander can help you be more productive in every single application on your Mac. Find out how at TextExpander.com. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Part two of our Mac Voices live panel with featured guest Peter Cohen and a group that keeps on showing up uh, for Mac Voices Live, which is great, uh, continues a discussion about what I'm calling some of the anti-Apple forces that are out there and the anti-Apple sentiment and what it might mean to you as an end user and why we don't always think of it as completely legitimate. We also get into a discussion of foldable phones or foldable devices, and one of the panel members even decides to make some predictions about where that might go and why it might become popular. So let's go right back to the panel. I, I'm hopeful that it's going to be very interesting to see how the, uh, the the prosecution and defense appeal to a jury instead of just a judge, but a jury. Um, and from what I've heard, I, I think part of the reasoning was that uh, jury trials don't get overturned quite as easily. So I'm, I'm hopeful that that's the case. But I'm also hopeful that they will get some people that are, you know, just not knee jerk, um, you know, big company bad kind of thing. I've, I've been honestly, I've been kind of pleased and and a little surprised at how balanced the reporting has been in the tech press, in the, at least in the Apple tech press. I want to speak for all of it, but you know, they see through. I think they've seen through. Listen to me; I'm biasing myself. Sorry, but they <laughs> they see through the fact that Epic, you know, really did stage some of these things, and and as the judge said, you know, Epic created its own problem, and then doubled down on the creation of that problem by publishing, you know, the cool video and, you know, making a big deal out of anti Apple this and anti Apple that and. You know, it's yeah. That's if that's the way they want to play it. That's the way they want to play it. But I, I think that I'd like to think that people are a little bit smarter than that. Maybe not. I hope so. I oh, hope good so. luck with well, that. There, there's, there's the hope that people are smarter than that, and then there's the reality that a lot of people are forming their opinions based on the one thing someone shared with them on Facebook, and if that one thing is the uh the letter the letter that uh, that people are passing around on facebook that that uh, paints apple as the bad guy that decided we just don't like epic and we don't like fortnite so we're just going to block them out and screw all the iphone users <laughs> if that's all that people are seeing that's the opinion they're going to end up forming so it, don't they, use Facebook as the message here. Really there we go. Today. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook is not a news source. Twitter is not a news source. And, uh, and please do your own research. So Thank that, you for watching us on Facebook, but don't use this as a news source, please. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> yeah. th this is proof positive that people are complicated animals because here we are doing this uh, very thing on Facebook. And rewind this show and go back to the the first question I asked Peter about, you know, his philosophy, his philosophizing, and what we talked about with the political stuff. You know, it it just you you have to go out and get the information for yourself, and and hopefully from from some more balanced sources than the the advocate that uh, is on Facebook. And that and by the way, that includes not just us. I mean, yeah, we're all taking a stance and we're giving our opinions. By all means, challenge us. You know, that's you. You have that right. In fact, I wish you would, yeah. because I'd like to know what you're thinking and how you're thinking about it. You know, so. there's um. While we're on the subject, by the way, this is just kind of a, a little bit of a digression, but th there's been a, a a meme bouncing around Facebook about how iOS 14 um, has revealed that there are keylogger apps or, or apps that oh, are. are, are yeah. Uh, are, are logging um, all of the yeah, through uh, widgets through through widgets yeah. right uh, the 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 author of Widget Smith whose name I forget uh, right off the top of my head um, came David out on Smith. Twitter David thank you thank you um, David Smith said that uh, on on Twitter hey this is going around this is complete bunk this is not true uh, so yeah again be very careful of the information that you're getting don't assume just because your smart friend sent it to you 
uh, that they know what they're talking about. Um, be like Reagan and Reykjavik. Trust but verify. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, of course, the information is sent to you by any of the five people here, then it's... Oh, absolute. God, no. Don't trust any of us. <laughs> uh, don't trust me. <laughs> you you uh, can trust me. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> out of the five, Jeff, I don't know, man. You, <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy who looks like a pedophile in his yeah. basement. <laughs> <laughs> in his basement <laughs> sex dungeon office oh my God. trust me uh, you can trust me we, only yeah. one of those our... things is illegal <laughs> <laughs> you know those are pretty good odds then honestly though i mean yeah you, you've got to be a you've just got to be incredulous about everything you know it it it, it just it 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 it, uh, it it aggravates me um and and you know it's it's mainstream media too. I, and I'm I'm not ranting about media here, but the fact of the matter is, like, if you've got a 30 second or 60 second spot on TV, you've got to compress a lot of complicated information, a lot of complicated technical information about whatever is being reported into that tiny segment. Um, so a lot of times, you know, when when you're talking to your friends about this sort of stuff, and you know the information comes up, it's very clear that they might have gotten one or two facts maybe from from what they've been watching, but uh, a lot of context is left out because. They can't absorb all the context. And quite frankly, the broadcasters or the podcasters or wherever they're getting their information from aren't necessarily, you know, getting that information to them as effectively as they can or, you know, in, in as complete a form as they can either. So uh, regardless of where you're getting your information from, just do more research. I think that that's pretty basic for uh and God, I mean, you know, it's not like you don't have access to the entire world's repository of information at your fingertips or anything. If only. But you do have to sift through, right? Like there are some serious, it's hard for some people to know what thing to trust. And that's really where it breaks down. Is, that's true. I mean, I can find lots of information for a whole lot of things that just super aren't true on the internet. And yeah, you can seek out information, but you need some guideposts of what to trust. This is why I'm really excited when I uh, – there, there are a few public schools now um, that I've seen start pilot programs where they're actually teaching kids about internet literacy and how to differentiate fact from fiction. It gets really bogged down sometimes with the parents groups, you know, who, when, when it gets really political. But uh, we obviously – I mean, you know, part of it is, is, is just – we've raised – you know, a generation of Americans, not just Americans, this isn't unique to America. I think that, that you know, that uh, a lot of, of uh, the modern world is like this, where we, we have endless information to, uh, uh, or endless access to information, but as Brittany points out, our ability to contextualize it is not really that great. I mean, look at our ability to distinguish threats from, um, uh, from, 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 um, actual problems right you know like if you if you read the news or if you you know read a website or if you watch the, the evening news you're convinced you may be convinced very easily that it's a very violent anarchic place uh outside wherever outside is these days and the fact is that we live in the safest time you know in human history uh it doesn't always feel that way but it's because we are so painfully aware of uh, of of uh, of threats because we're wired to do that at a very like basal ganglia level, right? I mean, we're mammals and it's worked for us for millions of years to be able to identify threats really effectively. The problem is risk assessment is an entirely different set of cogitation, right? It's an entirely different thought process. It's one thing to, 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 to recognize a threat. Oh, there's a big dog. It's snarling at me. It's another thing to actually assess the risk that that threat creates. And that's the problem that we've got now is that we have so much stimulus coming into us all the time um, that that we threat, 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 threat. Actually risk it, it, being able to do risk analysis on the fly, that's something that most people can't do. So we just get overwhelmed. And I think that that explains a lot of why everyone right now is feeling so burned out, so tired. And just so fed up with everything, you know, we, we, we're having threats thrown at us, like, you know, somebody pelting us with rotten produce. And it, it makes it very difficult for us to kind of figure out what we actually need to be paying attention to. 
well, the old newspaper saying, if it bleeds, it leads. And, you know, now I think if it scares, it leads. If it, if it, if it raises your blood pressure uh, through fear, it leads right behind. Well, if it gets page those, impressions, it leads. Well, that, yeah, that's true too. You know, it's, it's and currently it's fear is, is uh, generating those page impressions. Mm-hmm. It's the, rather the old saying is is not true. Sex has nothing on fear. Fear sells. Hmm. Well, sex and fear sell very well together. Also, I mean, that's the secret to a good horror movie, right? I was just going to tell you to ask Jeff, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's and isn't it isn't it kind of ironic that the, the fact that we have theoretically potentially so much more transparency, you know, I mean, and not all that long ago in the in the grand scheme of things, you had a limited number of networks and and pu- periodicals or publications kind of controlling the message. Now you have people out there everywhere, and the message has become so muddied. And, you know, then, so those very same things that we used to trust a little more than, I don't know, maybe it was better back then, but those very things that we kind of grew up trusting now have had to compete in this arena and they're doing it by fear, anger, sex, you know, and, and, and a few other key emotions to pull you in either, whether it's like you say, Peter page impressions or viewers on the TV or on video or whatever. Too bad. Just to, just just to go back uh, on about Fortnite and the, the Apple trial, that just came across the news that the, the Apple and uh, Epic decided not to have a, a jury trial. They're going to have a, a bench trial in its place, and it's not going to be. In, it, it just came over through the as I was walking, looking through, scouring through the news here. So, wow. I, I think about. that Epic would really prefer a jury trial. Yeah, well, they, it take. says two companies have both met and both agreed that their counterclaim should be tried by the court with a bench trial. Mm-hmm. Man, I'd I'd love to have been sitting in that room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also so, thought. Is it just I, so they can go back and forth with more appeals for longer? Or? <laughs> well, yeah, saying, they're saying this probably won't start until at least July of 2021. So we got yeah. this is going to go on for a long time. Yeah, I know you got to go, Peter. Mm. And and there's one other thing about that. And then after you leave, we'll probably leave leave the whole subject. But um, I, I did hear this morning that. I think it was the judge had proposed that, okay, put everything back the way it was and take the money that you know is in dispute and put it in escrow until the whole thing is resolved. And Apple was willing to, they were going to go back, but they, the attorneys apparently indicated they thought that would be okay. And Epic said, no, they didn't want it that way. Yeah. Epic so, is, is, yeah. is playing hardball and yeah. that doesn't seem to be the right game. Yeah, you know, an all or nothing. I, what I see happening here is Epic playing hardball, like Peter just said, and Apple playing the part of, look, we're trying to, to work with you here. We're trying to make this happen. And we really want to get a resolution here. And Epic's going to keep pushing to the point where, uh, where when Apple is ready to pull out their, their, uh, their big hammer, Apple is going to say, look, we tried, but now we have to crush you. That's just how it is. <laughs> what a special. <laughs> Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of world-class software like Text Expander. Whether you are a team leader or a team member, odds are that you are, have been, and will be working from a remote location for some time to come. That makes consistency of communication with each other and with your customers more important than ever, but also more difficult than ever. Enter Text Expander. Text Expander from Smile not only saves time and money by automating words, sentences, paragraphs, or pages so that they can be summoned with just a few characters, it also introduces accuracy and consistency. Each time that snippet is used, it is exactly as created the first time. No individual variations. No typos because you got tired of typing the same thing over and over. That means that once deployed to your team, no matter where they are, no matter how often they use it, they will be using that snippet to respond to customer inquiries and creating documents with exactly what you intended, saving them time and making you look great. Invest a few seconds, literally a few seconds, in creating a text expander snippet and get paid back every single time you use it, and that can mount up to a lot of payments since you will be using Text Expander multiple times an hour. 
Find out just how easy it can be to be more accurate and more productive by visiting smilesoftware.com slash podcast right now. Try Text Expander for yourself and see some of the ways that a wide variety of businesses use Text Expander to be better. That's smilesoftware.com slash podcast to see what smile the makers of world-class software have to offer you and your business. Thanks to Smile for their ongoing support of Mac Voices. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that's a great point. I mean, you know, the, the, the bottom line is Apple has already demonstrated that it's it's willing to make concessions to Epic, um, you know, to bring them to uh, uh, the table to negotiate here. So, I mean, you know, Apple Apple is clearly acting in good faith. Um, uh, it, it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out in court. But uh, uh, you know, it's it we as to David's point, it's you know, this is this is a, a tomorrow problem, not a today problem. Yep. Yeah. Peter, I, according to my time dilated clock, um, it's uh, 25 yeah. or a quarter of. So thank you so much for being here. Um, tell everyone where they can catch up with you um, right now. Best place to find me uh, is um, is is on Twitter at Flarg, F-L-A-R-G-H. And uh, if you're watching me on Facebook um, and we're connected on Facebook, cool. I generally don't connect with folks who I don't know in real life um, on Facebook. So Twitter is 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 typically the best way to find me. Great. Thank you so much for coming. I, I know uh, we had to cut it a little bit short for you, but I've, I appreciate it. We'll get you back again soon. I thank you very much for uh, for having me on. It was great to see everybody. See, um, good to see you too, yeah. Peter. It's so awesome to hang out with you, Peter. Yeah, yeah we miss you, Peter. <laughs> miss you too, guys. All right, take care. <laughs> take care. Bye. All right, so now we carry on without our featured guest. <laughs> Something <laughs> hey, a little bit not? different, but you know, yeah. Um, so I want to throw this out to the panel because I'm kind of curious. Um, I, I forget, I think it was Lenovo, but somebody came out uh, with an announcement today about yet another foldable phone or foldable tablet mm-hmm. or foldable device of some kind. Does, does anybody here care? Does, is this something you're looking for? <laughs> No, uh, I mean, look at Microsoft. Look, they came up with their foldable phone. It's a big flop already, you know? And I mean, who in the right mind is going to spend $1,400 for something that's got a big space between it and is buggy as all heck. Um, and then and then you have Samsung with their Z Fold. Yeah, it looks, looks all pretty and all. But again, I mean, $2,000 for a phone? I mean, I just don't see that being a big market. So I mean... And I just, in itself, yeah, it's nice to have a bigger device to be able to fold. But, you know, I, I have a te- I have 11 Pro Max. This is pretty big. I mean, I think I, I'm pretty happy with what I have so far. Um, I see why the industry wants to do that because people want larger size screens, but but having a portable device, that more portable than a laptop. So um, it'd be interesting to see where things go. But you've got all these, like yeah, like you said, Lenovo is now doing it. So it's it's it just, it just keeps evolving here. So... I'd be interesting to see what everybody else thinks, but where, where it's going to go. But yeah, it's just crazy to me. Brittany, do you do you hear any of your clients clamoring for a foldable phone? <laughs> no, I I wouldn't judge the product category by what exists right now. But for me personally, it will not be something I'm interested in. Um, I am stoked at the idea of a smaller phone than the one I have right now that still has you know Face ID and up-to-date processor and things like that. Um, I, I'm in the, the 5S was the perfect phone category. And I want a thing that in one hand I can use and not feel like I have to use my other hand. And, and that's what I want out of a phone that in, you know, being fast and capable and all of the other nerdy things, but I would like it to fit in this hand, which is only this big. And <laughs> <laughs> which is only this and, big <laughs> and if it's foldable then suddenly it's bigger and I, some people care about the pocket size and for me it's the hand size like i don't want carpal tunnel from using my phone i i have written long long essays on the elliptical machine like that's that's my use case for mobile devices so i need to be safe on my exercise equipment uh, I can expand on that. Just, I mean, I know you're being flip a little bit, but um, w- when you say, uh, you know, are you doing it with one hand or are you yeah, doing it with one, two hands? One hand. And and it's way harder to type effectively now that my phone's too big. Oh, and and okay. frankly, it was a little bit too big with the six size. 
Um, like as in, you know, six, six, S, seven, eight, yeah. S E current S E two. Um, like that was a little bit too big. And now I have this. And and although I do actually like this better than the success, I still want it to be smaller. I have better use of screen size. Like I'm very excited about this fall's potential giving me a better phone. But anyway, the point is foldable bigger in my hand problem. See, that's, uh, that's, that's fascinating to me because you're talking about using it as a non-phone device and yet you want smaller and you've got your reason no. for it. So that, that well, makes sense. Well, I mean, how many of us use it just like a phone? Like with, I mean, we don't use it like a phone. We type and we do things on it. And yes, do people write whole presentations on their phone in a text editor? Usually not, not usually, but I do. And I want it to fit in my one hand to do that. Reasonable. Jeff, how about you? Foldable or not foldable? I see foldable the, as a the, solution. The, to, to be clear, the phone, not you. Oh, oh, okay. Well, then in that case, foldable, <laughs> foldable is a solution that's still looking for its market, I feel. And, uh, and when it finally finds that market, then to me, it'll be a cool thing. I mean, the technology itself, sure, it's cool that we can we can have sc- screens that work and they fold up and unfold and, and yeah, that's neat. But uh, but I haven't seen the uh, the use case yet that makes me think, okay, this is really ready to take off. And I'm with Brittany on the phone size. My uh, my expectation is that my phone is my most mobile device, and as my most mobile device, it needs to be usable with one hand. And when the iPhone 10 came out, at that point, we had crossed the threshold where it's not a one hand device anymore. And and to me, that's that's a real big problem, at least for my usability. So. Maybe if Apple can create a phone that's usable one-handed, that folds out into something that's bigger when, when I'm in a scenario where having two hands to use the device makes sense, okay, sure, that, that might be okay. But uh, I, I'm just not seeing it yet. Um, and the, to me, the ultimate use case for foldability still goes back to that concept video that Apple made decades ago for the knowledge navigator. When, when we can have the knowledge navigator, that's probably when, I, when I'll get excited for foldability. Wow. Was that foldable? I, I think that's so. terrible. I, th- I thought it was foldable, Did it sc- but it was separate screens on each side. With <laughs> modern technology, it could be a single screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I find this really interesting because I now I'm I'm using the iPhone 11 right now, the, not the Plus, but the the 11. And I I had I guess two phones ago I had gone back to this size because I just I I, I very much loved what David has, you know, the the larger screen, but I wanted something that fit in the pockets just a little bit better and didn't weigh my my suit jacket or my pants down on one side as as much. And so I've, I've opted for this. And, you know, after about a week, you make the adjustment and it's not a big deal. And if, if I want that bigger screen, yeah, I can, I, I've got it. I've got different iPads. You know, I can go from the iPad mini the whole way up to the Pro. And I, so I can kind of pick the, the size screen I want to carry around for, for the application. So I, I don't know. I, I, but I think you said it well, Jeff. It's, it's a product in search of a problem. Yeah, it'll it'll find that place, and when it does, we'll we'll all sit back and be like, "Oh, oh, oh my God, yes, I need this. This is where I need to have my foldability." And I am well, excited to see what that turns out to be. Yeah, I mean, but I would think that it should be by by this time with all of us using our mobile devices as much as we all do, I mean, we all live and die with these things, that it it would have become very obvious that, hey, this is what I want to do, and I can't easily do it. I need two phones, or I need, you know, a, a phone and a separate screen. I need to cast it to my Apple TV so I can see what I'm doing, or something. But I, 
I, I'm not sure that that problem is going to ever show up. Uh, it will, I think. And, and I hate to use this phrase I'm about to use, yet here we go. Paradigm shift. We need to have a paradigm shift in the way that we interact with our mobile devices before the idea of the foldable phone or whatever the foldable thing is really clicks. With the way we are using these devices today, the foldability function is its still kind of a gimmick. Hmm. Okay. Okay. You don't want to, wouldn't care to make a, a prediction or speculation on the paradigm shift. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> as long as we're all here. All right. Um, here, here's my prediction, and hopefully this doesn't turn into something that goes off the rails. Um, our iPhones are a device that give us access to all of our information all the time. So that's a window into our data. And Chuck, just like you, I have multiple devices, uh, iPhone, a couple iPads, uh, a MacBook Pro, and an external display I can hook up to the MacBook Pro. So I have all these different size windows into my data, depending on how I want to, to interact with it. So what's going to happen is that we will find that the way that we need to interact with our data in any given window is going to change. And when that change happens, then we will need to have that, that foldable larger screen that, uh, that gives us that larger window. And I, now, now that I'm going out on a limb and making predictions here, I'm, I'm betting that the single fold is not going to be the way it happens. It's going to be something else. Maybe it'll be a, uh, a, a who was it? Was it LG a few years ago at CES introduced the, the, the rollable screen? It's like a sheet of paper. Can you, so imagine picking up your iPhone, grabbing the edge and going, shh. I'm pulling out this this whole thing where now you have a really big screen that then just slides back into the device. Scrolls make a comeback. And scrolls make a comeback. <laughs> I was really hoping you were going to say like an origami crane is the the shape, but scrolls are good too. Or you know, I could totally go for an origami crane screen. Depend, depending on what animal you fold it into, will set what the, what the screensaver colors are. Yeah, yeah. What totally. your background image will be. Just do some folding. Excuse me, yeah. wallpaper. Well, if you've got an <laughs> if you've got one of the uh, the iPad cases from Apple, I mean, you've already that thing is like a piece of origami. When you know you first have to learn how to use it to to, to I mean, you just kind of twist it, and then all of a sudden it's there. Twist it the other way, and it goes right back down flat. So. You know, you may have something, Jeff. But, you know, the, the window on your data is a fascinating way to, to, to phrase it. And, and as you were saying that, I'm thinking, window on your data, window on your data. And it's not a lot. I don't think unlike um, when, we had, when we had normal websites showing up on our phones as opposed to iPhone or smart device optimized websites. That okay, the the data shifted around and changed for the device we were on. So that's that's a really interesting way, and I'm I'm sure somebody else has said it somewhere along the way, but maybe not in quite those words. You're deep, yeah, Jeff. That's deep. Well, thanks. Yeah, I I, I like to to uh, keep you on your toes like that every now and then. <laughs> you do a good job. Well, guys, we're headed toward the top of the hour. Um, so I want to thank everybody for coming, uh, even those that had to cut out early, including Peter Cohen and Mark Puccio. Um, for, for the folks that are left, let's go around the table and let folks know where uh, they can find you. Um, so again, just working my screen, Mr. Gamut. Uh, I'm easy to find Jay Gamut on Twitter and Instagram. Um, coming up, uh, oh, geez, in a couple of days, October 1st and 2nd, I'll be at SearchCon which is an SEO conference. Of course, I'll be there virtually like everyone else. I am hosting a panel on, uh, on improving your, your business productivity and also automating 
your business. So Ooh. that'll be fun. Jeff, do you happen to know if is that a free conference or is that a pay for conference? No, it's a paid conference and okay. it's it's searchcon.event or events. I forgot what the what the uh, domain is for it. It's searchcon.event, I believe. Google. Okay. Well, yeah, Google, Google it. Go, it. Go check it out and uh, you can you can hang out with Jeff virtually for a couple of days or at least a couple of panels on those days. So thanks for being here, Jeff. Always fun. It's a blast every single time for me. So yeah. thank you. Yes. The lady in purple, Ms. Smith, uh, d- does that make you royalty this time around? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so where should we uh, where should we send folks to look for you? On Twitter, I'm ADD Liberator and my website for coaching and stuff, but also you can find a link to my YouTube with tech tips is conquer.consulting. And I do lots of strange things around productivity. We're going to leave it there. Thanks yeah, for being here, Brittany. Not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw how the earlier comments went. I'm afraid they'll go that the wrong direction. Um, David, how about you? Find me at uh, in touch with iOS at intouchwithios.com, doing the podcast and on Twitter at DaveG65. Thanks for having me as always. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices Live. We do this every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, just because I'm on the East Coast. Sorry about that. Um, we'd love to have you join us next time uh, in chat or in the Zoom room. Uh, we, we publish that information a little bit ahead of time. So if you are so inclined, join us. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.